Oh, what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself now i got a snippet from a very special interview with an artist by the name of cash mason this dude is not only an artist he's a songwriter super dope but what i love about his story man the the idea of betting on himself again and again and again and, and it goes from like working in the field with the oil all the way to getting big features with some artists and getting some big placements. But in this particular snippet right here is something that so many artists go through, especially if you aren't born into a big city. It's when do you move to a big city and some of the thought process that should go behind what you should think before you make that move. It's the network. I take that mentality seriously because you know, obviously I sign myself relates to the music industry, but really just that idea of controlling your own situation. Even if you are in a label or something like, but educate yourself, your whole process of, I went yeah. through some stuff and now I'm going to the performance rights organizations, like having all my stuff in order. You know what, I'm gonna I'm a take that bet on like, <laughs> you know, like getting this feature and you, yeah. you set up a contract for yourself. You sold, you mm -hmm. sold your car, but I mean, then you even moved to Atlanta in the first place. What was that yeah. What was that process like? Because to me, you, you exemplify that whole idea of controlling your own situation. Well, for me, like I got that. So my video went crazy on YouTube and then I got that deal from Spanx and I was like, I'm ready. That's what I knew. I, Cause like I had the business side down but I was just waiting on, you know, a song doing fairly decent and then me landing some kind of solidification that people could take take me seriously, that, mm -hmm. you know, that I have a major placement. So when I come to Atlanta, not be just some super small fish in a big pond, because Atlanta is huge. Like, I came with a placement. I met a million people with placements. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I met a million people that have, you know, hella followers. I met a million people that are verified. I met, it's just, Atlanta is, is drowned with it. But like mm -hmm. for me, I was like, you know what? I'm ready now. I'm ready to compete. Like yeah. before it was more of my pen's nice, da -da -da -da, but I haven't done nothing yet. Like I haven't done nothing yet. Mm -hmm. And you know, in Denver, I already had reached that ceiling anyways. You know, I had the biggest following between, you know, for the hip hop artists in the area and whatever else. But um, for me, I was like, once I, my video went crazy and I landed that song deal and I got that big payday, I was like, Atlanta. I just knew, I just knew it. Cause I didn't want to go back home. I'm from San Diego. I didn't want to go back home, you know, I didn't want to go to LA or whatever, because it just, it's not my vibe. Okay. Um, but I wanted to come to Atlanta because there's a lot of, you know, black people that are being successful out here. And so for me, that was huge seeing people like myself that are being successful. Obviously there's the scammers and the other stuff that's going <laughs> on. <laughs> and, you know, and, and people have tried it with me, but I'm, I'm smart about the game now. Like me, I understand the game. I know how to get myself on platforms myself. I know how to do this. I know how to do that. So when people come to me with bogus stuff, trying to scam me, I'm like, dude, I already know this, that, that, and third. I've been studying this for seven years. Like, so we, there's no way around it. <laughs> like, there's no way you can, you can get me. Yeah. So, you know, once, once that um, whole deal with Spanx happened, I was like, I'm ready. It's time. It was just that moment. It was like, ding, it's time. But and so within like a couple months, I was out of there. Okay. Dope, man. That's, that's dope. I love hearing that, but I also love to hear the fact that you still had, you had some idea of strategy and some level of accomplishment, not just the whole story of, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to just go. And that's cool, right, to have that idea, just take a chance, like they do in the movies and all that stuff. But the idea that you said, you know what, I want to achieve something right to hold to to be able to really have some level of credibility and not look completely like i'm in need of somebody right and yeah 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 to, well, to, and to get to get to that next level atlanta was the next level atlanta was like because to me I, was, I always look at atlanta like a mecca it's like it's like a mecca it's like yep. you you're gonna go there everybody can sing everybody can rap because like I, had, I was on Instagram and I, you know, so me, I'm like a nerd on Instagram. I'm looking at all these artists from Atlanta and seeing what's different, you know, who's doing what and what sounds are different. And so for me, it was like, a lot of people are not doing my sound in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was either soul singing or it was a dunna ma dunna, the kuna matata rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it, it was a kuna matata matata, a tuna matata. And I was like, I, well, I don't do that. You know, I, I can get busy like that, but I don't do that. And so I was yeah. like, okay. 
and a lot of people always compared me to, you know, my vibe to like a party next door or okay. like a Bryson Tiller. People always made those comparisons. So I was just like, not a lot of people are doing that, you know, besides, you know, I think his name is Six Black or Black. Black, Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His, his vibe is somewhat like that or whatever. And there was, um, there was a couple other guys that I had saw that were in Atlanta that were similar vibe to me. But I was just like, there wasn't too many people doing what I was doing. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? I can come out there and I can kill because a lot of the women that were on my page that were liking my stuff were in Atlanta. And I was like, Pfft. I was like, mm. well, I, I cater to, you know, young black women and a lot of black women, like, you know, in my songs. And so I was like, I need to be in Atlanta so they can actually see me in person, you know, actually performing and moving around the city. There it is. There it is. Yeah. So it's a lot more, a lot. See, I, I like hearing that backdrop to the, because for every artist, it might not be Atlanta, but yeah. Considering some of those points that you did, they might be able to figure out what city makes sense for them. Yeah. It's the network. All right, so if you want to check out that full interview, you can check it out at brandmannetwork.com. But, man, like that thought process is something that I love because, as I've stated, right, it was an, an analysis that he went through before he decided he should move to Atlanta and just the idea of how you choose the specific place. There's more factors than a lot of artists give credit for because just saying New York, L.A. or Atlanta, that's not enough. It really is not enough. And I hear so many artists say all these main places when it might not be the place for you. So that's one thing. Like, let's figure out what's going to be the place for you. And not just because generally there's this type of music, generally because it's that type of music or because they have a lot of business that gets done there. But even going back to your specific place, right, whatever city you're in, there's different ways to gauge. Are you ready? Right. All right. One, what's the ceiling in the, in the city? Are you number one in your city? Are you even close to being known in some way in your city? Even if the people in that city are not fans of your type of music, do they at least know that you do that type of music? Right? Is there some sort of scene in that city? Analyze that. Have you put in that work to get known or tried? Because sometimes I hear a lot of artists say there's no type of scene for whatever the type of music they do in their city. And it's more so they just haven't done the work to even find that scene to get some sense of collaboration done and some sense of sharpening your skills. Because that's one thing Cash Mace did, right? He sharpened his skills and rose to the top in his city. But those are two separate things, not just getting a social following. There's people who get their social followings going, but they literally don't put go you know they don't go through that process and he went through that process of songwriting let's get good at songwriting let's go write for other people right and let's send things off and, and let's do all this back in because he originally wanted to be just artists but he ended up getting his pen game stronger by taking that break from the artistry to focus a lot more on just this work for other people but that's still his own gauntlet. It's still his own hyperbolic training, uh, training like space. You got to be able to do that for yourself. What does that look like? It's going to be different for every single artist. But you got to figure out what training is required to be the type of artist that you want to be. Because every artist doesn't need to have a dope performance. It's dope if you can. But some artists don't want to be that type of artist when they imagine the type of artist they want to be. So if you don't need to have a dope performance, right? But do you need to have a dope pen game? Do you need to be able to write very, very well? Right. Or do you need to have super flows or do you need to have an ear for production? What are those things that are important to be the type of artist that you want to be? Train yourself up in those things. And then we talk about these other factors of getting into a big city. It's definitely going to help you out by having some level of accomplishment behind you. Some level. It doesn't mean that you have to be huge. But if you have something to stand on, then it won't seem like, yo, this guy needs me. He's desperate. I'm going to give him every opportunity. So everything that they give you, right, they're going to feel like it came through them and your success is completely built off of what they did. Right. Or they built you up to be who you are. You don't want to necessarily be in that position. So the way you help do that for yourself is give yourself something to stand on. Put in that work to do something by yourself. There's some artists that are only out for like five months and now they're looking for a big manager or a big system or whatever to make them become bigger. Nah, like do something yourself. Once you get that accomplishment behind you, one, you've learned a lesson. You know how to do certain things without having to rely on people. But two, you're not going to be in a position when everybody just says, yo, man, this this dude, like, I, he the reason that I'm the reason that he's here. You don't want to be there. So 
keep some of those things in mind. And then Mace said a lot of things in his interview in that snippet. You can watch that back and take notes on that yourself. Because I wanted to not even touch too heavily on the things he already said. Pay attention yourself. But hey, as always, you can watch this full interview on brandmannetwork.com. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.